What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Game Day with Trey. Of course, this is your host, Trey. And today, we're going to talk about this NFL Sunday afternoon matchup between the Atlanta Falcons and my Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, so this game will be played Sunday, October 27th, 1 p.m. East Coast time, Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. All right, so uh, first thing we need to talk about when we talk about these two teams, man, let's get into what's been going on with them, right? So Tim Bay Buccaneers are 4-3 and three this season after they lost to the Baltimore Ravens by a score of 41-31 in their last game. Tim Bay led 10-0 in the second quarter, but they fell apart and allowed the next 34 points for the loss. The Buccaneers were outgained by a total of 580-481 yards, lost the turnover battle 2-1, and went 11-17 of 17 on third down in the game. Uh, Baker Mayfield threw for 370 yards, three touchdowns, and two interceptions, while K. Otten caught eight passes for 100 yards. Mike Evans and Chris Gar Godwin were both injured in the game. Godwin with a dislocated ankle and uh, Mike Evans with that hamstring injury that he was nursing coming into the game. You know what I mean? So they both uh, will be out for at least, well, no, Godwin's out for the season. You know what I mean? But Mike Evans, he's going to be out for a few weeks. He'll probably be back in about two, two, maybe three weeks, right? So, uh... Tampa Bay also has losses to Denver and Atlanta, all right? But they do have wins against Washington, Detroit, Philadelphia, and New Orleans. The Tampa Bay offense has, uh, has averaged 29.9 points per game with 248.3 passing yards and 135.1 rushing yards per game, while the defense has allowed 26 points this game, uh, per game this season. So the defense really ain't looking too good, guys. All right, now the Buccaneers have gone 50.6 Wait, now, hold up. Now, let me give you the reason the Buccaneers defense ain't looking too good statistically right now. is because of that game they just played against Baltimore, man. Baltimore really put up some numbers. And that game they, they when they uh, lost to Denver as well, Denver put up some numbers as well. Those are really the two big games where teams came out there and really put up some numbers or put up some points on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, guys. All right, so the Buccaneers have gone 50.6% on third down uh, and 2 of 4 on fourth down so far this season. Baker Mayfield's completing 70.5% of his passes for 1,859 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. While Bucky Irvin, he's leading the team rushing for 351 yards and 3 scores. So when you're uh, looking at that team, man, you got to understand what's going on in the injury report with the Buccaneers. So Greg Gaines, he's going to be out this game. Bucky, he's, he's nursing that uh, turf toe, so he's questionable. Uh, of course, uh, Tyron Smith, he's still going to be out with the concussion. All right. Uh, and we all know about Mike Evans. Uh, Payne Durham, he's questionable with the calf as well. And so as Randall Jarrett. Right. So uh, let's go ahead and let's look at this other team. Let's look at uh, how Atlanta's been playing coming in this. Right. So Atlanta Falcons are 4-3 and three this season after they just lost to the Seattle Seahawks by a score of 34-14 in their last game. Atlanta trailed 17-7 at halftime. But they cut the deficit to 17-14 to 14 early in the third before allowing the Seattle to pull away on them, man. Now, the Falcons outgained Seattle by a total of 369 to 339 yards, lost the turnover battle 3-0, and went 8-15 of 15 on third down in the game. Kirk Cousins threw for 232 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions, while B. John Robinson, he rushed for 103 yards and one score. Uh, Atlanta also has losses against Pittsburgh, Kansas City, but they do have wins against Philly, New Orleans, of course, Tampa and Carolina. All right, now Atlanta offense is averaging 23.3 points per game. That's with 251.1 uh, passing yards and 119.6 rushing yards per game. While the defense has allowed 24.1 yards per, I mean, points per game uh, this season. Now, the Falcons, the Falcons have gone 38% on third down. That's 7-11. And uh, on fourth down so far this season, uh, they ain't looking too good either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, uh, when you're talking about Kirk Cousins, he's completed 66.9% of his passes for 1,830 yards, 10 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, while Bijan, he's got 483 yards and 4 scores out there, guys. All right, uh, so taking a look at their injury report right now, of course, Grady Jarrett, he's uh, he's still nursing an injury, but he'll most likely be out there. McGarry will probably be out there, even though they all got rested this week. Um Simmons is doubtful with the hamstring. Okay, that's the uh, very important safety that they need out there. Uh, Judon, yeah, you know, he's injured, but he'll be playing. 
All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at these two teams a little bit deeper, right? So I already told you that Atlanta has the 15th best offense as far as points per game in the NFL. They're going against the 28th worst defense in points per game in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that's 23.3 uh, points per game that Atlanta scores, and the Bucs give up 26 now. All right, third down conversions, they're both in the middle of the pack. All right, Bucs allow you to convert 37.2.1 percent of the time uh and atlanta converts 37.97 percent of the time both 19th right uh red zone uh atlanta sucks in the red zone they're the 24th worst offense in the nfl when it comes to red score red zone touchdowns whereas so they only score a touchdown 50 percent of the time but the bucks they're 13th best defense in the red zone only allowing 53.3 uh, percent of the time for you to score a touchdown in the red zone. Now, when you're looking at Tampa and on um, the inverse, Tampa's offense has been on fire. They got the fourth best offense points per game in the NFL going up against Atlanta's 22nd worst defense points per game in the NFL. That's 29.9 points the Bucks score versus Atlanta giving up 24.1, guys. All right, third down conversions. We're the number one team in the NFL. We convert 50.59% of the time, man, versus Atlanta's the second worst, uh, allowing you to convert 46.67% of the time. Much opportunity for Tim, maybe regardless of all the injuries, right? It's going to come come down to play calling and how Liam Cohen can, can navigate this, right? Because with Tampa coming in here, having the fifth best rushing offense in the NFL when you're looking at yards per rush uh, or whether you're looking at uh, eighth best offense when you're looking at yards per game, right? They're going against Atlanta's top 10 defense when yards per rush, but they're the 24th worst defense in the NFL when it comes to opponents' yards per game, giving up 137 yards. And Bucks, they usually get 135.1. So it's a very good matchup for the Bucs there. And Atlanta's rushing offense really hasn't still come together, man. They're still the 16th rushing offense in the NFL, only getting 119. And the Bucs, they're, they're like 19th uh, as far as what they give up there. So there's plenty of opportunity for them there, as well as opportunity for Atlanta in the past game. Atlanta, uh, Tampa's passing off uh, defense is virtually like the 20th worst. They give up 7.2 yards per pass. And... Uh, Atlanta, they're the eleventh best. They get seven point six yards per pass, guys. Now, when you look at the inverse, Tampa should have an opportunity here because we do have a very good uh, or very prolific passing offense, but we are missing two of our best wide receivers. So you got to throw those numbers out and see what these boys are able to do out here today, right? Now, when you're looking at these two teams, you also got to understand what they did in the last three games. The last three games, the Bucks came out and scored 37.3 points per game, but they gave up 34.7, and that's because of the fact that you're looking at that Baltimore game. Then when you look at Atlanta, Atlanta scoring 29.3 points per game, but giving up 28 points per game in the last three games. Okay, so the Bucks are winning by an average of 2.7 points, whereas Atlanta's only winning by 1.3 points. All right, now at home, the Bucks score 27 points per game, but give up 25.8 points per game. In Atlanta, on the road, they score 30 points per game and give up 20.5 points per game on the road. Situationally, when you're looking at these two teams and uh, how they played thus far this season, right? So we know that uh, Atlanta's 4-3 and three and Tampa's 4-3, and three, right? But on the road, Atlanta's 2-0, and oh, and Tampa, is on, as a home team, is only 2-2 two and two so far this season, guys. So Tampa's been struggling at the house. All right, then when you look against the spread, Tampa as a home team is also two and two, and as a home underdog is one and one. All right, now Atlanta as an away favorite, okay, they are two and or as an away team they're two and zero against the spread, but as an away favorite they are one and zero so far this season, guys. So that's something to pay attention to. And then over unders, Atlanta's three and four, three to the over, four to the under, whereas Tampa is five to the over and two to the under thus far this season. And at home, Tampa is three to the over and one to the under whereas Atlanta on the road is one to the over and one to the under, guys. All right, so taking an even deeper dive into these teams and how they're looking right. Uh, in the last 10 times that these teams have been actually out on the field, going back to last season, Atlanta's 5-5, five and five, uh, straight up, 4-6 and six against the spread, and 5 to the over, 4 to, I mean, 5 to the under. Uh, in the last 10 times, that's going back to last season, next uh last season guys and then when you're also looking at the next games that they got coming up they got dallas coming up new Orleans, and denver so they do kind of have some teams coming up that could be giving them some trouble man because we know dallas they might wake up one day right <laughs> and then when you look at tampa tampa six and four uh in the last 10 six and four against the spread and six to the over four to the under in their last 10 games all right uh they are on, currently on a one, two, three, four game over streak right now, guys. And in the next game, they got to play is Kansas City, boy. Then they got San Francisco, and then they finally get a break with the Giants, man. But 
that's after the buy. So take that with a grain of salt. They definitely got some hard games coming up. All right, head to head these last 10 times these two teams have played. Tampa does run it six to four uh, straight up, but Atlanta has it against the spread, six to four against the spread. It's been seven to the over, three to the under in their last 10 times that they've played. And we're playing on two overs in a row the last two times that we have matched up out here on the field, guys. All right, so uh, when you're talking about these two teams, you got to kind of look at some trends as well. Atlanta Falcons have hit the second quarter game total over in 12 of the last 17 games, whereas the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have scored first in seven of the last nine games. All right, Tampa Bay Buccaneers have also scored last in 10 of their last 13 games, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have hit the second quarter money line in 12 of their last 20 games. Atlanta has hit the first half game total over in 12 of their last 20 games, and the Atlanta Falcons have hit the team total over in 10 of their last 17 games. Tampa Bay Buccaneers have hit the team total over in 13 of their last 20 games, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have covered the second quarter spread in 13 of their last 20 games. Now, Atlanta, Atlanta has covered the first half spread in six of their last 10 away games, guys. All right, so uh, understanding all that, man, you got to know this, right? The Buccaneers have won five of their last six Sunday games as underdogs. The Falcons have lost four of their last five games as road favorites against NFC opponents. The underdogs have covered the spread in each of the Falcons' last nine week eight games. And the Falcons have failed to cover the spread in seven of their last eight games as favorites following the loss. The Buccaneers have also won the first quarter in each of their last four home games against teams that held a winning record. The Buccaneers have also won the first half in each of their last five games as slight underdogs of three and a half or less. All right. Uh, the Buccaneers have also scored the first touchdown in each of their last four games as home underdogs, right? But you got to look at it like this, too. The Buccaneers have also lost 14 of their last 15 Week 8 home games. The Falcons have won six of their last seven games against teams that held a winning record. The Buccaneers have failed to cover the spread in each of their last six home games in October, and the Falcons have covered the spread in each of their last five October road games against NFC opponents. The Falcons have also won the first half in each of their last six games as favorites following a loss, and the Falcons have scored the first touchdown in three of their last four road games played on the East Coast. The Buccaneers have won the first quarter in each of their last four games that's like underdogs though like i told you before guys so you gotta gotta remember that man and each of the falcons last six games as favorites against the buccaneers have gone over the total points line the, uh, each of the buccaneers last six games as underdogs against the falcons are going over the total points line and each of the last five games between nfc south teams uh, has gone over the total points line guys all right so uh where we at what we looking at right now man to be honest with you Okay, both these teams are coming in this matchup following a loss. Uh, Buccaneers struggled last week stopping the run, but that was against Lamar Jackson. Um, the Falcons struggled to just still figure out who they are identity wise and how they should be winning games. They should be running the ball. You got two great running backs, and then let that go into the past, but they're not really doing it, man. You know what I mean? And the Bucks, the Bucks got a lot of injuries. So, where am I looking at, man? I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm, I, I, I had the Bucks. I took the Bucks already with the plus three. Now, the line has moved. Remember, it was, it's right now at plus two Buccaneers. Over under is at 45 and a half, guys. It's been a plenty of movement. Uh, the end is moved to the under. Because remember, it was at 46 and a half. It's moved down to 45 and a half, guys. All right, so I anticipate a, a lot of running in this game by the Buccaneers that's going to eat up a lot of clock and at the end of the day that could only tell you that it's probably going to go under but I'm definitely on the Bucks today you guys I don't know y'all tell me in the comments y'all have a blessed day stay safe and I'm gonna see y'all at the window man peace